Hi, I'm Ashley from The Loopy Lamb, and thanks for stopping by my channel. Today I'm going to teach you how to make this adorable koala keychain. In order to make this pattern, you'll need to know how to do a few basic stitches. You'll need to know how to do the magic circle or adjustable ring, a slip stitch, single crochet, single crochet increase, and the single crochet decrease. Some of the tutorials are available on my blog, thelupylamb.com, for these stitches, and I'll be releasing videos for these stitches on this YouTube channel shortly. So please hit subscribe and you'll be alerted to when these stitch tutorials become available on this channel. So let's grab our hooks and get started. For this project you're going to need Knit Picks Fable Fur Yarn in the color Kuma Knit Picks Bravo Worsted Weight Yarn in black polyester stuffing, scissors, a large eye tapestry needle, a 12 millimeter split ring. I'll show you here. I got these ones from Michaels. A large stitch marker, a keychain attachment, and I also got those from Michaels. Here we go a 5.5 millimeter crochet hook and a 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. Let's get started. All right, and we're going to start off using our faux fur yarn here and our 5.5 millimeter crochet hook. And we're going to start making a magic circle. Oh, let me grab my hook. We're going to grab the other strand of yarn here, pull it up and make a chain one. There we go. Right now we're going to pull that yarn tail out of the way because we don't want to crochet over it because it um, can get stuck and make things a little more difficult than it needs to be. So there's my tail and we're going to place six single crochet stitches into the ring. There's one, two, three, four, five and six. All right, let's tighten that tail up there. Cinch the circle closed. Now we're going to find our first stitch and I'll mark that with my stitch marker. Just kind of feel it here. There we go. Okay. And so for the next round, we're going to do one single crochet increase in each stitch around. So that means we're going to place two single crochets in each stitch around for a total of 12 stitches. Okay, so we're going to go into our first stitch here, which is always a little tricky. There we go. And there's our first single crochet. And we're going to move our stitch marker up. We're going to do this for every round. Move the stitch marker into the first stitch of the round to keep track for us. And back into this first stitch and do a second single crochet. Okay, and we'll do this again. There's one and two. Now into the third stitch. There we go. One and two. The fourth stitch, one and two, one, and two, and one more time. There's one, and two. Let's get this yarn out of here. Right. Now for the next round, we're going to place one single crochet stitch in each stitch around. So we'll have 12 stitches. Oops, add our stitch marker. There we go. Then we've got our first stitch. Again, we want to move our stitch marker up to mark that first stitch of the round. There we go. Okay, and let's do the rest of the stitches. There's two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, there it is, and twelve. Okay, and we're going to do that for the next round. We're going to just place one single crochet stitch in each stitch around for a total of 12 stitches. So here's our first one. Move up the stitch marker. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven. Now you'll notice um, before I do each stitch, I move my left hand to feel the next stitch with my fingers. And that helps me uh, do this a little quicker. All right, and now for the last round of just single crochet stitches, we're doing one more round of one single crochet stitch in each round. So there's our first stitch, and we're going to move up the stitch marker here. Oops. Okay, and there's the second stitch. Third. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and twelve. There we go. All right, let's just take a look here. And so what I'm doing is I'm feeling the rows. So we just finished row five and we're going to place the safety eyes into row four. So I just feel the top row down to the, the second row, which is uh, from the top is row four and I'm placing my stitch or my safety eye. Now it doesn't matter where you place it at this point because um, we're just going to find the place for the second eye. So feeling along row four, we're going to count over two stitches because there's supposed to be two stitches between the eyes and then place my second eye in the third stitch. All right. So I'm just gonna move the fur out of the way, make sure that that placement looks good, that they're in the same row. And now we're gonna put this backs on the safety eyes. Now this can be a little tricky because of all the fur and the opening's a little smaller, but just kind of turn the out the inside out a little bit so you can see. Get that on there. There we go. See, we've got one, and then we're going to work do the second one here. Let me get the back. There we go. Just pop that on. There we go. All right, so you'll see that the fur kind of obstructs the eyes once you've got them in place with the backs, but we're gonna fix that in a few minutes um, with our scissors. All right, so I'm just gonna pull my uh, tail out a little bit. There we go. And then we're gonna start stuffing the head. Well, let me just grab some stuffing here doesn't take a lot of stuffing, but you want to ensure that it's stuffed firmly and uh, evenly. You don't want a lopsided koala head. Yeah. And so I'm going to add some more stuffing a little later um, after we do this last round here, just to make sure it's stuffed properly. Okay, so for this next round, we're going to do six single crochet decrease stitches. So or the end of the round will end up with six stitches at the end. So we'll go into the first stitch and the second stitch. Move that stitch marker out of the way. Finish the decrease 
and then put our stitch marker in that stitch to mark the first stitch of the round. Okay, and we're going to repeat, re goodness, repeat that five more times. Okay, there we go, there's two, three, oh my goodness, I am just thumbs today, sorry. I'm just going to continue with our decreases here. Things are getting a little tighter um, now that we're cutting down on the stitches. I'm sorry, I keep dropping the yarn here. Okay, and now we're just going to finish our last decrease here. Okay, so keeping our stitch marker in, we're going to finish off by cutting our yarn and leaving a long tail because we're going to use that to sew the hole closed and attach our split ring. So let's cut that and then we just pull the yarn all the way through the last stitch. So I'm going to add my little bit of stuffing here before I close the hole because I feel like it could use a little bit more. Let's add just a bit more. Trying to make sure that it's it's even, it's kind of pushed around in all the spaces in there. So you don't kind of have any obvious lumps. Alright, so we're gonna thread our needle here and we're gonna close up the hole. So what we, I like to do here is um, I weave the tail through each stitch of the last round, working from the outside towards the inside of the circle. So I've gone through my first stitch, the second stitch, and this will help to cinch the hole closed. In from outside to inside. And that's why I keep the stitch marker in here so I, I know that I've gone through every stitch of the round once I end up in the stitch next to the, my stitch marker here. All right, and we pull that taut. Don't pull the yarn too tight though. We don't want it to snap on us. All right, and so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go from one side of the where the hole was to the other and make sure that it's um, parallel to the eye placement because I want the split ring to go in such a way that it doesn't cause the head to look um, crooked when it's attached to the keychain. So i am got my split ring here. I'm just going to hold that and I'm going to just sew it to the top of the head there. You want to make sure that the opening to the split ring is facing upwards. That way you don't have to fight with it later when you want to attach your keychain piece. So again, when you see this, you want to just take your time pulling it through. It will pull through eventually. Just try to be patient so it doesn't snap the arm. And you can go through the, the ring as many times as you'd like. The fur generally obstructs the, the like seeing the ring mostly, but um, you still need to be able to get the keychain on there. So I do this a couple times, and then when I'm satisfied, I will pull my yarn through back through the project to kind of weave in the ends. Make sure that you're going through stitches and not through the yarn, because that can be problematic. So. Just tugging to make sure that's secure. And now I'm going to tie a knot. And let's see, I'm feeling where my stitch is. Okay. 
Oh, okay. I'm going to go back through this first and then I'm going to tie a knot. I wasn't quite through a stitch as nicely as I'd like it to be if I'm knotting it. So I've knotted it. See, I felt around for my stitch and I'm going back through the stitch to the other side to pull the, the knot inside the project. I'm going to knot it one more time. And then back through the same stitch out through another part of the project. If you have like a large uh, plastic tapestry needle, that would be better than the one I'm using today. Um, it's easier to thread and it's generally longer so you can push it through the project easier. So I just cut my yarn here and now we're going to weave in the tail from the creation of the magic circle. So if you're having issues threading your tapestry needle with this yarn, um, use your scissors and cut the fur part off of the tail. So you just have the black band left and it makes it much easier to thread it on. Okay, so I'm just going to repeat what I did with the last tail, pulling the tail through the project a few times. Oops. Okay, and then I'm going to cut my tail here make sure that I'm not cutting the actual fur on the project. And now we're going to give him a bit of a trim. So we find our eyes here. I like to pull the fur back away so I can get a clear view of where the eyes are located. I'm just going to smooth it back with my finger and we're going to grab these scissors. It's time to start cutting. So I work in a circular motion here and just kind of lightly trim around the eyes until I'm satisfied with um, how it looks. So it can be a little messy, but you, I don't ever trim off too, too much. Um, so it's able to just be swept up with my hand after. So I just kind of Keep moving around in a circle. Try and keep it even. And brush the hair away from the eyes as I'm doing it like this. Now I like to pay particularly close attention to the area between the eyes. And I'll get to that in a second here. Um, because when I'm, when you sew on the nose, it can get a little sloppy. So if by keeping the hair or the fur relatively thinner here or, or less um, messy, it makes it easier to sew the nose on and it also keeps it so um, you don't have all these like little clumps of fur um, poking out around the nose. So I'm just going to do a little bit more here. And the more you do this, the better you know how short you like it to be. All right, I'm just gonna get this all out of here because I think I'm feeling pretty good about where he's at right now. I'm gonna put him aside, grab my yarn, and we're gonna get started on the nose. So for the nose, we're going to need the uh, Brava Worsted yarn in black. Here we go and our 3.5 millimeter crochet hook. So we're gonna get started with this with a magic circle. Now we're gonna take our hook, create a chain one to secure the ring. For this, you can crochet over the tail. Um, not an issue like it is with the fur. And we're going to place six single crochet stitches into the ring. So there's our first, second, third, fourth, fifth, 
and six. Okay, and we're gonna cinch that ring closed. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then we're going to slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. Again, that first stitch is always a little tricky. And there we go. Okay, so we're gonna finish off leaving a longer tail so we can sew this onto the face. There we go. Let's get that out of here. Okay, and we're gonna pull the yarn through the stitch. Make sure it's nice and tight so the sti uh, slip stitch is a little less obvious. And we're going to thread the long tail we just created onto our tapestry needle. So I like to um, put the needle back into the first stitch of the round to pull the yarn to the back of the project. It helps to um, make the stitch, sti uh, goodness, slip stitch a little less obvious. Okay, so we're gonna place his nose here. If you'd prefer, you can use uh, needles, or not, pins to put it on his face. And we're just going to sew the nose onto the face. So I go into the project and then I like to use the backs of the stitches um, to, to use to secure the nose onto the face. I don't like to go through the V of the stitch at all because um, I really like the, the finish that the V's of the stitches create around the ring. So I just go back into the project and through the backs of the stitches. And you'll notice that as I sew this on, I kind of like move the fur out of the face when I feel like it's um, like right here, like where it's kind of getting in the way. Make sure that's secure. There we go. We're almost done. See where the fur here is kind of getting in the way, so I just pull it out of the way. So I'm not sewing like a and creating a clump of yarn at any point or fur in, at any point around the nose. Okay. This is our last stitch here. All right, and that looks good to me. Now we're going to weave in our ends after I finish fiddling with the fur around his eyes. Okay, so we go in underneath the nose and out through the back of the project. Then I'm going to tie my yarn in a knot here so I can pull it back through the project So it's a little more secure and make sure that you're going through a stitch and not through the yarn with this. Okay, and just pull that through. See, I did that a little tight, so I'm just going to pull that out and fix it up. Okay, and we're going to knot it again and repeat what we just did. Here we go. And then we're going to trim the tail close to the fur, but making sure that we're not actually trimming the fur on our project. Don't want to end up with any little bald spots. Okay, and then we're going to deal with this other end here by pulling that through our project as well. Sorry, the camera doesn't seem to want to focus here on me for, give me a second. Yep, there we go. I've tied a knot here and we're just going to pull it back into our project. Oops. All right, there we 
it go. And just to be quick, I'm not going to knot it a second time. I'm just going to pull it back through and then trim my tail up. All right. And that's all set. All right, starting to look a little bit more like a koala now. Oh, I just want to trim this a little bit. Just like it to be clean. Again, this is like a personal preference thing. You can trim it and leave it, but if I ever find like little strays and whatever, I like to clean it up. All right, he's looking good. Let's get started on the ears. So for the ears, we're going to need our faux fur yarn and our 5.5 millimeter crochet hook again. Let's get that all set. All right, and to start the ears, we're gonna do a magic circle again. All right, so I'm going to create the chain one to secure our magic circle. And again, because we're working with the faux fur yarn, we're just gonna get that tail out of here. Not gonna crochet over the tail. And we're gonna place six single crochet stitches into the ring. And there's one, two, three, four, five, and six, here we go. All right, so let's tighten this tail up. Make sure it's nice and tight. Then we're gonna slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. Now this is always a little tricky. Oh, there we go. There's the first stitch and slip stitch. And we're gonna finish off here using a long tail so we can sew this ear to the head of our koala here. and pull the yarn through that stitch. Okay, and now we're going to do those steps again. We're gonna create a second ear. We're going to create a magic circle. Chain one to secure. Get that tail out of here. There we go. And place six single crochet stitches into the ring. There's one two, three, four, five, and six. Okay, let's tighten that ring up and slip stitch into the first stitch of the round. All right, come on now. All right, finally, we've got it here. Okay, so I'm just tightening that up a bit and we're gonna, once again, leave a longer tail so we can use it to sew the ear onto the head. Let's cut that. And pull the yarn through that last stitch and tighten it up. All right, and then we're going to just place these ears onto his head. So normally when I'm doing this, I have some uh, sewing pins that I like to use to secure the ears onto the head before I sew it. So I'm feeling good about my placement. Or you can do what I'm gonna do now and just kind of wing it. The ears are relatively big, so if you're off by a little bit, it's not that noticeable. Now, what I'm doing is I'm just whip stitching the ear onto the head. It's one of my favorite things about this yarn is that this, if this was another kind of yarn and I was whip stitching in this manner, this would probably be really sloppy looking, but the faux fur yarn is incredibly forgiving and it just all kind of blends in and it allows you to do a quick seam like this while it still looks really good. So, um, I really like that for that. So I'm just going to continue sewing this ear on quickly. 
every once in a while I'll just kind of adjust it so it stays straight. Let's get that out of here. All right, that looks good. And now I'm gonna just weave my ends into my project. All right, out through the other side here. Just checking to make sure that it hasn't changed the placement of my ear at all. I'm gonna create a knot and then pull it back through my project. You can do this as many times as you'd like in order to feel good about how secure the ears are, but just to make it quick, I'll do it once or twice. I'm just gonna pull this because I created a little indent there. There we go. And back through the project again. Okay, now I'm gonna trim this tail. And we're going to get rid of, um, we're going to work on this other tail here now next. I'm having a bit of trouble um, threading my tapestry needle here. As I said, I couldn't find the bigger one earlier. So um, again, if you are having trouble like I am here, just snip the fur off of that end. And so you just have the strap and use the strap to thread your tapestry needle. So much faster. All right, so I'm making sure everything's taut and then I'm going to weave the end into the project again. Oops, sorry, I'm kind of going off camera here. One sec. There we go, sorry about that. All right, now I'm just going through the project again. That looks good to me, making sure that didn't create any indents. And then I'm cutting the tail. All right. So that's one ear on and that looks good so far. Let's get the other ear attached. Thread this needle here. There we go, finally. Okay, so I'm just going to put this in place. I think it looks good there. So I'm just gonna start sewing it onto the head. Again, just a basic whip stitch, nothing fancy. And then I'll kind of like adjust my hands here as I go to make sure that I'm maintaining the same placement um, that I started with and making sure that it looks good. Okay, back through my project again. Oops, got the other ear. There we go. Okay, we're almost done. Making maybe just a couple more passes and we'll be all set. The tail stuck here, remember, just exercise some patience because you really don't want the air in a snap. Okay, almost set. Okay, just gonna take a look here. That looks good to me. All right, so. We're all set with sewing that on, now we just have to weave in our ends. So again, finding a stitch, not through the yarn, and pulling it from one side of the project to the other. Normally I would knot this, but just to be quick here for you, I'm just going to pass it through a few times. and trim my tail. All right, 
one tail left. We're in the home stretch now. Oops, sorry about that. All right, so I've trimmed the fur off to make um, threading this needle a little easier. One second here. All right, so I've threaded my last tail on the tapestry needle, and I'm gonna just put that in through my project and out the other side. It's gonna, don't want it to change the position on my ears at all, so I'm just gonna check on that here. Looks good. And back through the other side. There we go. Okay, and then we're just gonna trim our tail. All right, and there he is. So I just have to attach the keychain attachment after this. And he's all set. All right. So we're going to use the opening of the split ring there, just kind of a, open the ring a bit, slip on the smaller ring that's attached to your keychain attachment, and then just spin the split ring until the keychain attachment is securely on the ring that's attached to the koala's head. Sorry, I know it's hard to see with all the fur and everything. All right, and there he is, he's all set. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial making your very own koala keychain. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments section below. I'd love to hear from you. If you did like this video, hit the like button and please consider subscribing to this channel. Thanks so much for watching. Happy hooking and I'll see you next time.